Hello, Kit Randall here, and today I'm going to be talking about ComputerCraft, which is an excellent add-on for Minecraft made by Dan200. Um, so the, the focus of this video, um, and the resource I'm going to be showing you shortly, is for primary school educators. So uh, this is really targeted at young children um, that you're interested in teaching some fundamentals of computer programming to. So ComputerCraft is an add-on which has uh, a lot of features um, and, and really we're only going to touch on some of the very basic things that it can do. Um, but um, the, the crux of it is that you can um, have a computer terminal within Minecraft that you can, um, you can write simple programs on and those programs can manipulate things in the game um, and there's also, um, also these things called turtles which is this in the picture you can see here is a mining turtle. And that's sort of like a computer that can move, and you can program it to move and do various tasks like cutting down trees or mining or digging holes, that kind of thing. Um, but um, so we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. Um, but the um, the first thing to do is to have a look at computercraft.info, which is the website, and there's probably some inspiration for some things you can do um, there. And there's also the wiki, which is computercraft.info forward slash wiki. The wiki is great. There's an API list, which is probably um, uh, the meat and bones of the wiki, where you can where you can find um, find out all the commands that the the turtles and consoles computers support. Um, so if you want to really dig into it, that's a, a really good place to look. Good resource, and there's some examples of um, programs uh, that you can have a look at that other people have written. So the easiest way to get ComputerCraft installed. Um, I think is through Feed the Beast. So Feed the Beast is a collection of mods for Minecraft. Um, there's a couple different mod packs that have different mods in them. Uh, the one that I'm going to be using today is called Feed the Beast Lite. Uh, Feed the Beast Lite doesn't have um, all of the mods included, but it does have computer craft and some other good ones too. Um, and it's just a little bit less resource intensive than, than some of the other larger mod packs like Feed the Beast Ultimate. Um, but you'll want to perhaps explore Feed the Beast a little bit. But what Feed the Beast does is um, it really um, adds a significant amount of depth to Minecraft. Uh, it makes it a much more interesting game. Um, and it also introduces a lot of things which I think could potentially be really interesting um, sources, uh, resources for education. So. Today we're just going to be focusing on computer craft, uh, but just to briefly go over some of the other things that are in here, um, there's um, there's forestry, which allows you to automate production of food and farms. Um, it even um, has this concept of bee breeding. You can you can find bees out in the wild and breed them together to create bees, which have different abilities, different traits, and uh, bees from different biomes will breed to produce interesting interesting different kinds of bees um, and it's an incredibly deep system that um, even gets down to sort of genetic analysis of the bees and uh, it's quite it's quite intriguing uh, and then there's um, Greg Tech and industrial craft and these introduce new ores to the game which can be used to build new machines um, there's all sorts of uh, crazy industrial machines you can build um, you can even uh, end up building a, a nuclear reactor and towards the end of the game uh, but there's there's all sorts of different ways to generate power. You can generate power with biogas, um, with uh, with steam, um, geothermal, uh, wind power. It's 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 quite phenomenal. Uh, but at any rate, um, perhaps spend some time looking at looking through those resources. But to get started with Feed the Beast, you need at the minimum you need to download uh, an executable. So either if you're on Mac OS or Linux, you want to get the jar. If you're on Windows, you want to get the exe. And then once you're ready to also introduce other um, you know, kids to, to a world that you've prepared, uh, you're going to want to run a server. So Feed the Beast has um, slightly higher system requirements than Minecraft for running a server. And if you have 10 or more kids on, on a server, you're really going to need a fairly grunty machine, unfortunately. You need probably in 3 or 4 gigs of RAM at a minimum, I would think, and a, a dual-core CPU, ideally. So, um, yeah, it, it, is, uh, it is fairly memory-intensive, but um, good fun once you get it all set up. 
So, um, what I'll be showing you today is just the beginning of a world I've been working on, uh, which is um, sort of like a, a, a tutorial. Um, um, so. so, here we go. So, we spawn in this place here. Um, now, I'll, once I'm finished with this, I'll make this world available through the show notes, as well as listing all the resources for the relevant downloads and that sort of thing. Um, still have a bit to do, as you'll see towards the end. Um, but uh, I just wanted to put this up here to, to get some feedback. Um, so, kids will start here, and they come here to the Computer Craft Institute. They'll walk in. So this is just a, a greeting room. So it just says hello, and you'll get to see a monitor. So this is a Computer Craft monitor, and here's a Computer Craft computer. Now see, the first lesson is to craft a computer. So here is a somewhat sketchy uh, representation of the materials you need to craft a computer craft computer. The monitor is trying to display um, a bitmap graphic and um, or a, a bitmap graphic that's been converted into the, the system that it understands. So it, the representation is not brilliant, but it gives you a pretty good indication of what's supposed to go there. So that's actually smooth stone around the outside. So I'm going to need some smooth stone. We're going to need some redstone in the middle and the pane of glass, and that gives us a computer. So we've got, we've got our first computer craft computer. Uh, when the kids are in here, I, I recommend you put it on survival mode so they can't just create arbitrary blocks everywhere. You don't want them doing that. And you really only want them just to have the one thing in their inventory, so the computer. So once they've made their computer, uh, we'll go through here to lesson two, and that's to learn some craft OS commands. So every computer has an operating system. Um, and um, the computer craft computer is no different. It's got an operating system called Craft OS. And so the instructions are over here. So place your computer on the green square. And then we're going to get a record from the chest. Okay, so you see there's a chest here and there's a record spinning around. Here. So grab that record. And put the record of a disk drive. So this thing here is a disk drive. You can see there's a wee slot. So the disk would be on there. Then right click your computer and run the DJ program. So using the commands here, the kids need to find the DJ program. So the two commands they need to do that the CD for change directory and LS for list files. So coincidentally, these are also commands that are used in um, the Unix operating system. So this will work in Linux and other flavors of Unix. So they're actually learning some, some real commands that can be used on a real computer at some point. So they go in here and so if they type ls to see what's there, you can see there's a directory called ROM and I'll explain to them what ROM means at the time. ROM, every computer craft computer has a directory called ROM that is filled with stuff that is can't be written to. So it's just it's just sort of pre-programmed stuff that comes with the computer that you can't modify. Uh, but let's, let's see what's in there. So we're going to change directory and we can even type dir which is the DOS command or ls, which is the Linux command, the Linux equivalent to list some files. We'll see there's a directory called program, so that seems like probably where we want to be. We'll go in there, and then we can see these are all the built-in commands that come with the computer craft computer. So, and the one we want is dj. So we'll type dj, and we'll see we've got some music. So the kids have learned how to navigate the file system, and how to list files, and how to run a program. So that's a, that's a good start. I'll just put that back in there for later. And we get through here. And then lesson three is our first program. So we're actually going to learn to write a program. So the kids will take their computer from the other room and place it here. <clears throat> kind of cheating. I'm in a mode called creative mode where I can just create arbitrary things. but Kids won't be able to do that when they come in here. There's some little information panels scattered about. So, did you know Lewis used to make games such as World of Warcraft, The Sims, and Civilization? Did you know computer craft computers are programmed in Lua? So, so that's something um, to mention. The children, um, when they learn to program a computer craft computer, will be learning a real-world programming language that is used um, used quite a bit in real-world programming. Um, Lua was written, I, I believe it was written by Brazilian geologists, uh, so it was originally intended to be used for science, 
but for some reason it has become very popular for uh, scripting logic, sort of high um, high level logic in computer games, which is why I mentioned some some three very popular games there that use Lua quite a bit. So um, yeah, they'll be learning a real world skill here, which is great. Um, so what we're going to learn here is how to just write a simple hello world program. So we're going to edit a new program called hello, and we're going to use the print function to make a program that prints hello. So uh, let's, let's give that a go. We're going to type edit hello, and we're going to use the print function print hello. So the kids will learn how to use the editor. So Computercraft has a very simple editor. It gives you a line number and um, it doesn't really have much functionality other than editing text, basic, very basic text editing and saving. And uh, the print option allows you to print the source code of something, a program you've written, and store it on an item, which is a piece of paper, a printout, uh, but you can keep it in your inventory in, in Minecraft. Um, so it's, uh, but you need to attach a printer, not a real world printer, a printer, a computer craft printer, but we won't do that now. So we type hello, we've got a program that says hello, great. So I'm just going to get rid of that for now. Cool. So, um, so the kids have written their first program, a really simple program. And some takeaway things here are we're going to learn the word function, so what a function is. Um, a function uh, might also later mention that they can be called methods. So that's sort of an action. So that's telling, telling something to do something. Um, so we'll try to put that in, in really simple terms for the kids to understand. Uh, they'll see later a method, uh, a couple of different methods on the turtle object and in the next room. And we're also going to introduce a concept of a string. So a collection of characters, uh, basically just a word. So hello is the string that we're printing out, for instance. So some simple stuff, um, but some really important fundamental concepts. And over here, you can see there's a slightly more advanced hello program. And I'm not going to spend any time on this when the kids are here, but if they want to wander around and do that, they can. So this this hello, you can put your name in. So you can say, hello, Fred. It says, howdy, Fred. So this, this program has some comments. So these are comments in Lua, are two hyphens like that. And this program is a little bit more complicated because it takes arguments, program arguments. So you can pass it a name. So you noticed in the console, I typed, hello, Fred, and it said, howdy, Fred. So it's, it's getting some arguments some command line arguments. And it also has some conditional logic too, it uses if. Um, but I think I might scatter some of these around. Uh, they won't be the, the core, um, part of the core lesson, but if the kids want to come and explore later, I might give them some ideas. So uh, here's the, um, I guess the last series of lessons, so the turtle lessons. And this is where things get a bit more fun, so I think. Um, so the turtles, are these we guys. Now Turtle is a computer craft computer that can move around. So it's, um, you can see here, if we look at all the turtle items, there are tons of different turtles that do different things. So there's a gauge reading mining turtle, a thumb scanning shearing turtle, solar engineering turtle, turtles that do all sorts of weird and wonderful things. But what we're doing here is we're just starting with the very basic turtle. And the very basic turtle has some very basic commands. So this is where we might show them that these are functions attached to an object, some methods. So turtle is the object, and we're going to be telling the turtle to go forward, to go back, to turn left, and to turn right. And the object of this little exercise is to try to get your turtle from the green point to the blue square. So this is just some very simple procedural programming. Um, they can write pretty naive programs here just to move the turtle around, so if we say turtle top forward, oops, syntax error, don't know what turtle is, you can see the turtle's moved forward one, and if we say turtle walk back, we'll go back to the starting position. So we want the kids to write a little program that'll make the turtle go forward, forward, turn left, go forward, turn right, go forward three times, turn right, go forward, turn left, and just make their way to that point there. So that would be at that point, if they can do that, then we'll move on to a slightly more complex task. Not too much more, but I'm just going to introduce another programming concept of a loop here. And so the idea here with this exercise 
is to get the turtle to go round and round this blue ball, this little blue square. So we're going to um, we're going to write a program called loop, and there'll probably be another screen on the side with some instructions around this. So we're just going to say while true do. So that means do do it indefinitely. True is this is the condition that you have to meet for the loop to stop. True is always going to be true, so it's just going to keep going. This is an infinite loop. So while true, we're going to say turtle dot forward, and we'll just keep it as simple as possible. Just repeat ourselves here: turn to forward and turtle dot turn left. Oops. And then end. So that ends this block here in Lua. Type loop. You see that our turtle is going to go around and around there. So with a bit of help, with that, um, hopefully so the kids can figure that out. And then I'm thinking of some other exercises, but I might leave it there for a short, relatively short ses session. But over here, I'm going to expand on this a little bit more and show some of the more advanced things that turtles can do. Maybe show a turtle chopping down trees or excavating um, or um, opening doors or managing managing some livestock or something. Um, just, there's a whole array of amazing things you can do with these turtles, so I think it might just be nice to have a demonstration area over here where I can um, inspire the kids to do some more complex things once they've got their hands on some, some simple programming. But anyway, that's it for now. Uh, if you have any comments, please, please get in touch. Um, once the world is complete, I'll put a link to it uh, in the show description. And um, I'll also probably be doing um, some sort of PDF or printed resource that kids can take home to their parents to show them how to, if their parents are interested, purchase Minecraft if they don't have a license, um, how to download Feed the Beast and how to get started, um, and some other good resources. And there's some really good um, screencasters on YouTube that are kid-friendly, um, that um, are sort of mindful of their audience, that do um, some great things in Feed the Beast. Uh, so I'll, I'll put some links to resources for that sort of thing as well. And um, I hope you've enjoyed watching and uh, look forward to hearing from you.